we know. We're going to have a formation that is uh, called 5-1, meaning that we're going to play with five spikers and one setter. That's the way 99% of the world plays, almost everybody. I was explaining before that uh, there is another formation that is called 4-2, meaning that you have two setters on the court at the same time and four attack attackers. And uh, uh, there's uh, two problems with that. One is there's one advantage, let's say one problem. One, the advantage is that when you play with two setters on the court, you basically have the courts, you have one, two, and three attackers in front, one, two, and three defenders in the back. This will be the setter. So meaning that after defense, the ball goes to the setter. This setter will come in to set the ball, meaning that you have one, two, and three attackers, meaning you have three options to attack <coughs> from front court. Uh, setters are usually put, are usually, are always put opposite, right? Meaning that when you do the rotations and this setter, or let's call it two, this setter goes back here, this one is here, this one becomes an attacker and this becomes a setter. Meaning that even in these three rotations, we always have one, two, and three attackers. So the advantage of playing four, two, is that you always have a front court with three attackers. While you play five, one, when that one is going back, uh, front court, you have two, two spikers, and one setter in front. Okay, so it gives you less options. Now, the question is why doesn't everybody do that? Are you allergic to me or you just have a problem with your Okay, uh, why uh, doesn't everyone does that? In uh, almost every country try that. The problems are that you have to uh, identify and train forever to setters that are also very tall that are also very strong, they can also attack as, as well as they set, and it's not that easy. Meaning that you have to find always some complete athletes that can do everything on the court. But most of all, the coaches say that the, it's not worth because the, the training time is whatever, 20 hours a week? So that one player has to invest 10 hours in setting and 10 hours in spiking meaning that uh, he's uh, training half, halfway compared to the others. So it's not worth to use a setter uh, that is also a spiker because you need more training time, you need more specialized work, you need higher player, stronger player at the same time. Too much trouble. So that's why at the end of the story everybody plays 5-1. Uh, so we're going to have 5-1 because that's the easiest way. Uh, again, it gives you le less options in front court, but during the time, volleyball has created some attacks from backcourt, especially, and we'll see that, from one, when the opposite player is here, so the setter is here, because we rotate and we reverse. So you can attack from one, and you can attack from six. Okay? So at this point, every play, every single play, we would have Supposing the setter is in front, we would have uh, one and two attackers, one setter, one and two attackers. So when the setter is in front, we have four options. That gives you enough options to play the ball. So it's too much trouble to have a 4-2 formation. It's easy anyway to, to have a 5-1 because we can attack from the back. Okay? So let's forget the 4-2 because nobody does it. But just for your culture, I want you to know that this happens and I think uh, 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 who just told me they do it here Polly just told me somebody does it here okay they do it even as a more disadvantage because only the setter in front is setting meaning that for every rotation they only have two attackers so that's a disadvantage even more mm -hmm. right so that doesn't make sense but maybe it comes easier to them uh, their business all right then now uh, let's get the positioning on the court because you know the rule says that you have to rotate all the time. So for each uh, play, you rotate. For each point, so 